Thank you, Jim. Thank you. We're here at uh, 1871, Chicago's New Digital Startup Club, for a, uh, a great opening act where we introduce Chicago's exciting new entrepreneurial companies that you may not know of, but we'll be excited to hear and, uh, and see the companies of the future, the founder stories of the future. So we have, I'm uh, happy to have her here. Raman from uh, Pangea here, and uh, they have a really exciting company that you, you need to hear about, and uh, we'll hear a lot about in the future. So that, welcome to the opening acts right here. Thank you, Pat. Appreciate it. Tell us a little bit, what does Pangea do? So Pangea is developing a new payment platform whose goal is to make money transfer, or what we call international remittance, easier, cheaper, and uh, more convenient than the current established ways of doing it. Most consumers today are underbanked. They have to walk, often commute to dedicated money centers like Western Union, MoneyGram. And uh, you know, it's just a laborious process. It's a lot of paperwork, it's expensive. Uh, World Bank estimates global money transfer costs to be around 9.3%. So we're gonna help disrupt that industry, an industry that we believe has not really fundamentally changed in decades. So is this kind of a Western Union 3.0? To a certain extent, yes. So what's, why, why would somebody do business with Pangea? What's the advantage? Uh, what's your edge over the Western Union's of the world? the infrastructure and 150 year old brands? I think you, you hit the nail on the head. It's, uh, it's an infrastructure. The difference is Western Union's business model is legacy infrastructure based, right? It's brick and mortars, it's uh, dedicated stores, agent models, primarily what they pioneered. And it's been, you know, it's definitely effective, it's not very efficient. So what we've approached, you know, the way we approach our business is to leverage a lot of the macro trends that all of us are aware of. Uh, you know, the growth of the internet, the explosive growth of prepaid products and prepaid technology in general, uh, the growing infrastructure that supports identity verification. Uh, you know, we're able to do things today that could not have been done three years ago, five years ago. And what helps us is we connect to existing payment systems that have evolved that push billions of dollars of transaction volume today. And we are somewhat of a network of networks. And we get to leverage not only you know, what we want to do as a company, but our partners' brands, our partners' uh, history and success. So is it mobile driven, or is it more mobile than Western Union? So it's, it's a multi-platform support. So we provide mobile access, Android, Apple. We provide web capabilities, and we provide retail capabilities. So consumers will be able to go with cash into convenience stores, retail stores, places that they're familiar with, no longer having to drive or, or you know, walk or take a train to a dedicated money center. So you're, you're, the local store is your network? Correct. It's really cool. So it's a fantastic idea. It sounds exciting. Thank you. Where's the idea come from? Where, where do you see the opportunity and where did the idea germinate from? Sure, you know, if I had to trace back the genesis of it, it's really, I worked in the prepaid space for some time. I got a chance to, I got exposed to kind of the infrastructure that exists, that powers the prepaid industry, the major networks, the major processors. And kind of the light bulb that went off was, you know, by and large, most of the systems are disconnected. So what I envisioned was a, you know, kind of a, a world where you could connect a lot of these systems, facilitate collaboration, and move funds across networks. And I think, you know, for me, the critical change in the growth of the business really came with our acceptance into the Impact Engine and, you know, through the guidance of the program, access to the mentorship, the leadership, as well as, you know, people that are fundamental to the industry that I, that I got access to, really helped crystallize the vision and move it forward. So I, I owe a lot, a lot to that program. So Chuck actually uh, announced Impact Engine when he was here at Founder Stories, and uh, great guy, what a great mentor to have. Wonderful. I always learn a lot every time I talk to him. Uh, what did you get out of the Impact Engine experience? You were here at 1871. Yeah. Uh, so you're the product of 1871, which we're very Correct. proud of. So talk a little bit about what that experience gave you. How was the company different afterwards? Than before? Yeah, you know, I think, you know, the accelerator program is like many things in life. A lot of what you put into it is what you get out of it. And we were very fortunate to be part of the first class. So we had a tremendous amount of support from not only the core members who the leadership of Impact Engine, but we got a chance to access their network. And uh, you know, that's just priceless. I mean, there are conversations that I've been able to have during the development of Pangea that I just could not do on my own, regardless of my business school or undergrad or other networks. 
you know, Chuck is, is a seasoned entrepreneur. He has a great network. The rest of the board is a great network. And to be able to tap into that you know, broader network was fundamental to us. And you know, also, beyond just the network exposure, it's also the learnings, the day-to-day. -day, you know, there's Building a company from the ground up is really challenging. It's, uh, you know, there's a lot of war wounds, and you're in a lot of foxholes. And uh, to be able to look to the people around you and say, hey, I'm committed to getting through this. Uh, will you help me? And to have that support is you know, unbelievable. And they really have. So what can you tell us about Traction to Date? Obviously, you're sure. a new company, you're young, yep. but uh, what can you tell us about how far you've gotten? Sure. Uh, you know, I think for us, what we have done is we're developing partnerships with the largest players in the payments industry. And, uh, you know, that for us has been a, it's a longer sales cycle than most people are aware of. So we're building a business that has kind of a two-sided aspect to it, right? There's a massive infrastructure play followed by a very strong consumer outreach. And we're in the, mostly on the first stage of the business where we're developing the infrastructure. And we're also doing a lot of the key research that supports how you will market to the customer, how you will generate cash flow, you know, how you think about markets and expansion. So you know, I think for us, you know, we're working with some of the best people in our industry. We're very grateful and tremendously humbled by our support. Our partners have gone above and beyond what I would have expected. And uh, you know, also one of the big milestones for us is just growth of the team. And you know, when we started it, it's you know, a few people, and you slowly start to build it. You get some traction, you convince some very smart people that you guys will you'll trust, you'll take care of their money, and you'll build a great company. And then you start to kind of recruit more people, and you have to sell people on this great vision. And we did, and uh, we've now grown from a small number of people to close to 10 people right now. And we brought on people in every major functional area, so marketing, operations, legal, finance. So you know, we're building the business, and uh, so those are some of the great things. What will be the key to your growth? As you guys go to the next level, you look at like, what's the thing you really have to nail, or the most important thing to getting to that next level? I would say probably the most important part of my business is still people. Right? It's still, it's a human-driven business, it's relationship-driven. You need to work with the best people, uh, not only smart people that know the industry, not only people that are passionate, but also people that have a risk appetite for the startup culture. You know, it's not something that is necessarily common. You know, some of our member team members have kids, have families. Most people leave comfortable jobs that when they make good salaries to you know, build something from the ground up that can help people. I think you know, our one of our advantages is we're a social enterprise. So everything we do helps people. Our business, our economic model, and our social impact model are intrinsically tied together. Every dollar that I help save a consumer helps me make money. Uh, what, the way we make money is obviously we just drive down the cost. Is it, mostly, is it mostly domestic to domestic or international? It's, you know, it's both. Um, you know, probably you know, primarily international women's kind of concept. Where, what countries do you see point. being most critical to you? Uh, you know, that's, it's a good question. There are major remittance corridors around the world that dominate. It's got a simple Pareto optimality. Right? There's probably five corridors that account for 80% of the world. Uh, you know, one of the major ones is U.S. and Mexico. It's a logical place. Uh, it's a strong immigrant community. Uh, you know, the Middle East, Asia is also a big one. The Philippines is a big market. China, India, big markets. So, you know, by and large, what we have done is we're building our business focused on kind of the North American corridor to Latin America. And strategic partners are helping us develop the software, develop the product, and we're hoping to launch it later this year. That's great. Well, it's exciting. Thank so, one last question. I always ask our opening ex uh, entrepreneurs, which is, I'm going to interview a great founder tonight and building something that could be a billion dollar business. And he's been at it a long time, but he's building a great business, and it's an exciting story. If we're having this conversation years from now, and you're on that track yourself, what does that company look like? What's that long term vision that you and your and your team have for what this can be when it grows up? It's a great question. Uh, I would say, you know. Right now, I have the luxury of telling you it'll look exactly like it looks. And uh, you know, what we want to do is build a product that helps consumers save money, save time, uh, do something that's that they're you know, money transfer by and large is, is sent to help people. Right. So someone working here sending money back, let's for example say Mexico, is sending it back to their loved ones. It helps put food on the table, sends kids through college, uh, you know, keeps the lights on. 
So everything we do helps people. And I want to make sure my, my goal would be that five years from now, if I'm lucky to be sitting down where Jay will be, is to say that we've done that. We've stayed true to that vision. We're still helping people. We're a social enterprise. Our product, we're just moving more volume. Uh, but we are still building the business the same way, the same ideology and support that we're doing today. That's true. Well, it's a great company. We're proud to have you in Chicago, and uh, good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it.